G'day guys, Craig here, and welcome back to Roman in the Robo. So, in this episode, I'm going to be installing a new Anderson plug in the Everest to overcome some charging issues we're having when we're towing the camper. So, let's get into it. So first of all, I am not a qualified auto electrician. I'm not a 12 volt expert, but I have been talking to Jason from Off-Road Living in Wingara, who is a 12 volt expert. Let me just explain the problem I've been having. So I recently installed a Victron Smart Shunt uh, to the camper trailer. And using that, I noticed I was only getting 10 and a half, 11 amps of charge into those batteries. And there's a 25 amp Red Arc DC charger installed in the Robo. And as you can see, at 57% state of charge, I would have thought we'd be getting a lot more amps flowing into those batteries. And I had nothing else connected. I actually had the switch panel isolated. So the only current flow was from the charger into those batteries. So I was scratching my head a little bit about what's going on. So I shot down to have a chat with Jason and he seems to think that I'm probably suffering from voltage drop. Now, just quickly, I don't fully understand this stuff. Um, I'm only just sort of learning how all this works, but voltage drop basically happens along the distance of the cable. So the longer your cable run, the more voltage drop you'll experience. And to overcome or minimize voltage drop, I guess, you install bigger gauge cable. And the cable distances we're talking about here in a typical caravan camper trailer towing scenario are 10 or more meters in some cases. So there's a lot of potential to suffer from voltage drop. Me and Jason shot out to the car, popped the bonnet, and the first thing he noticed, and this had actually already been brought to my attention, is the VSR, the voltage sensitive relay, it's useless, it's redundant, I don't need it. The DC charger has a VSR within it anyway. It acts as an isolator. It isolates your start battery from your camper batteries so you don't run the risk of draining your starter battery when you leave it all connected. And the second thing that he had noticed, oh, and by the way, this Anderson plug was fitted by a qualified auto sparky. The cable size that they used is way too small. Not only that, they've used dual core cable and they've connected both the black and the red wire together. Now, I don't know if that's uh, common within the auto electrical industry, whether a lot of guys do that or not, but it's certainly not best practice. So, on Jason's advice, I've decided to install my own Anderson plug. I purchased four BNS cable. It's a much thicker cable. I think the cross section from memory was 20 mil squared, something like that, much bigger cable. It's actually the biggest cable you can use and still fit it to a 50 amp Anderson plug terminal and it only just fits on. You gotta get a super clean cut and you just get the end started and you actually tap it on with a hammer before you crimp it. Uh, and I also purchased a 40 amp resettable circuit breaker. All right, well, that's enough of me waffling on. Let's cut to the install. Oh, actually, just quickly, at the time of filming this, we're approaching 500 subscribers, which is absolutely staggering. I had no idea we'd want people, you know, to follow on on our little adventures or pay attention to anything that we're putting out there on YouTube. But your support is appreciated. We love connecting with you guys in the comments. So if you enjoy what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Hit us up in the comments. Yeah, we're blown away with the support. So thank you very much. All right, off to the install. All right, so I've just removed the spare wheel just to give me a little bit more access under here. Now I'm just gonna turn you around. <clears throat> that's the original Anderson plug just there. So that's obviously where the new one's gonna be mounted. Uh, I'm gonna run the, the negative earth to a chassis mount. Just gonna earth it out there. There was a handy little um, uh, nut insert already in there. So I'm just gonna run the, um, gonna run the negative from the Anderson plug up to there. And as far as the positive goes, I'm just going to follow 
along the top of the chassis. I'm just going to follow the original cabling that's already there. It's going to cable tie it to that. Basically, what you want to do is you want to keep it away from uh, any moving parts like your suspension or anything um, that's going to get hot like your exhaust or whatnot. I'm going to put it all in uh, split tubing anyway and I'll just cable tie it up to that. And then as we go underneath, this little bit up here is going to get tricky. Um, there's not much room, but I need to follow these cables up here. I'm sorry, it's quite difficult to see. Follow those cables up through there. And then going to try and catch back up with it up on the other side here of the body mount. So that's going to be the, the fiddliest, trickiest bit, trying to get it up in there. And then I'll just follow it along the top of the chassis all the way along until I cross over the front body mount just here once I come over the top of that that'll give me access to the engine bay it'll come up from down in there I know it's dark I do apologize but uh, just down in there and I'll follow it up the side of the engine bay side of the firewall and then it's going to come to the what would you call it the dead side of the um, circuit breaker and then obviously the positive side of the circuit breaker I'm going to bring it all the way to this little bolt here this little terminal bolt terminate it there Alrighty, well that's the easy one out of the way. Just got the uh, the chassis mount, cable tied it up, protective sheath. Up into that little spot there. On to the hard one now. So just as I expected, that bit there <laughs> was a huge pain in the butt. But I got it through. So I'm just going to cable tie it to the top of the chassis all the way along. I'm glad that bit's out of the way. All right, so here we are here. Just passing it through there. So I'm actually gonna pass it through the back, uh, through the back of this mud flap here. So this is that uh, mud flap removed just on the inside here of the wheel well. Um, you can see I've just peeled it down there just so I can have access to the engine bay there. So here's my, uh, Here's my cable just here. There we go. Got it up there. Cool. So now obviously all I need to do is uh, just tuck it up and cable tie it to some other stuff. Do all your final connections and then I'll be done. Okay, so with that new cable and Anderson plug installed, just need to connect it to the trailer and see what difference it's made. So as you can see, still at 58% state of charge, and as soon as that DC charger recognizes the input from the vehicle's alternator, it jumps straight up to 13.9 amps, which is better than it was. Like it's an extra three amps. I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't say I was hoping it would be more, but I guess as a percentage, it's. Uh, just over 25 percent better so i'm going to call that a win obviously there's some issues still going on uh, with the setup inside the camper so this story is to be continued um, that'll be the subject of another video i'll crack open that camper and see if i can find any um, uh, cabling issues or ways to optimize that setup now look there might be an inherent 
um, bottleneck within the way that that system in the camp is designed. Um, I'm hoping I can overcome it, but like I said, subject for another video. So that's about it for this episode. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you out there.